Hello friends, this is Scott, and this was early May, and I'm checking on the progress of my Egyptian walking onions, and the bed looks fantastic. It's fully filled in, it's expanding beyond where it should be, and uh, in a minute I'm going to show you, you know, a couple weeks later, why they call them Egyptian walking onions. So, I'm just going to, you know, don't mind all the weeds here. I haven't got into weeding my own backyard garden much, but... As you see here, there's just little onions that are popping up all over the place. And again, how do they get to all these different places? Is Egyptian walking onions have little top sets that produce bulbs. And when they get a little bit mature toward maturity, they'll fall over onto the ground, these little bulb clusters, and they'll touch the ground and they'll get rooted. And then they create a new plant. So as you see here, all through my garden, I've got Egyptian walking onions everywhere. So I've got plenty of transplants to take down to the hobby farm or to give away to whoever may want some of these. But, you know, they're a, they're a fun little crop. But, uh, yeah, they do spread. And, uh, again, they walk throughout the garden if you let them. So, so here's a look now, a couple weeks later. This is, you know, yesterday, I believe, in the garden. And you see the top sets are, are growing. This is kind of the candlestick phase, they call it, uh, where the little top sets are just getting started and they don't look like little candles. From these, they'll come little tendrils. Those little paper cocoons will pop open and there'll be some tendrils come out. And on the end of those tendrils, there'll be bulb sets that, that anywhere from maybe, you know, four to 12 bulbs on each, uh, each plant. So then they'll get mature, they'll dry up, they'll fall over, and then they'll reseed themselves again and set, and they'll root, and then they'll just keep on walking throughout the garden. So, so it's a fun crop. So if you want to try something unique, uh, Egyptian walking onions is kind of a, kind of a neat uh, option. With all the school garden and hobby farm happenings, as well as my son graduating from high school and playing his final lacrosse season, I've been really slow getting around to my own home garden, but I'm just cleaning up the pole bean trellis. And here's a look at, uh, this is where bean seed comes from. Again, the nice tender green beans that we get, if we leave them on the out and let them dry, they turn into the seeds. And so uh, it's pretty obvious to most, but uh, just to give you a look here, there's some, uh, those are Blue Lake uh, green beans, I can tell from the color. But you can really see how aggressive these tendrils get. I mean, you plant them in the ground, it takes you know a few months for them to get all the way to the top of the trellis and then produce the beans. But it's amazing how tall. I mean, they probably go 12, 13 feet in the air, and they'll get up into my trees uh, if uh, the weather conditions are right. So, but uh, planting green beans is very simple. Now, this is I am going to plant them in the same spot I did last year. I used a garden inoculant on the seeds, which is a, it's a nitrogen fixing help. And uh, once it's in the soil, you don't need to keep adding it to the seeds. Uh, so if you plant green beans for the first time, you should find some uh, garden inoculant and soak the seeds, wet the seeds, and then soak them in the inoculant, and, uh, which is just a coating, and then plant them with that. Because what beans do is they produce, they take uh, nitrogen from the air, and they'll, they'll fix them to their roots. So when the roots die off, they can release that to other plants. So green beans are pretty self-fruitful. You don't need to use much fertilizer, and they do produce, you know, again, nitrogen for other plants. So these here are Kentucky Wonder Beans, and you see they're brown, so they're a little different. So every green bean variety could be a different color, as well as any, any hard bean that you find in the store. But all I did was loosen up the soil, and I'm, I'm just going to put the seeds, just lay them on top on both sides of the trellis, on the inside and the outside, in kind of a you know diamond pattern, nothing fancy. Just going to lay them out, and again, don't cover them up right away because you got to make sure you know where you're at. Uh, so if you start pushing them into the soil as you're planting them, you'll get lost, of, and you won't know where, what you did and what you haven't done. So, so just lay them out on top of the soil, and then we'll worry. I'll show you how I plant them here. Very simple process, but you want the soil to be pretty loose. Now here's the blue lake, and the one that the dried one that I pulled off the, uh, you know, the trellis was a blue lake. I could tell because as you see here, they're uh, they're a white seed. And I know those are the two varieties I've been planting. Uh, this, these seeds are getting a little old, so I'm hoping they're going to be, uh, you know, still viable and, and germinate appropriately. But uh, if they don't, I'll just replant. Um, you know, the season's long enough that you can get, uh, if, you, if you have some bare spots, you can always throw a few more seeds in the ground and, and you'll get a, you know, you know, the beans will produce. So not a problem. They'll produce all the way up as long as you keep picking them until the first frost and then they'll uh, die back. So as you see, I just kind of laid them out there on the soil. To get on both sides of the trellis. I did them a little thicker than I usually do. There's a couple of rows on the inside, it looks like. But 
But you see the different color variations of the brown and then the white. And so one side of the trellis is, is the Kentucky Wonder and the other side are the Blue Lake. And if you have any loose soil around the edges, you can just cover them up and push them down. But my favorite way to do it is just take my finger and I just shove them into the ground. So, and they're gonna to need to go about an inch deep. So it's nothing, it's not no exact science. It's kind of that first crease of your knuckles about it is about an inch deep and just shove them in the ground. Now, if you happen to miss a few, you know, you find them the next couple of days later, you see them sitting on top of the soil, just go and push them in there. They're no problem. A lot of people will soak their, their seeds. Uh, I don't generally do that, but it does take a little longer for them to germinate. So you know, soaking them and using inoculants uh, are good practices for, for green beans, especially when you're first planting them in an area that they've not had green beans before. But a very simple crop. Um, bush beans tend to produce, I think, a little bit quicker uh, because obviously they're not producing all the top growth. So at the uh, school garden, and if I plant any at the hobby farm, I'm going to plant bush beans just because uh, I get a little bit quicker of a crop. But at home, with limited space, I want to grow vertically. And uh, therefore, you know, literally this is maybe a three and a half foot area. And I can grow a ton of beans just right up this, in just three and a half feet straight up. Now, if I tried to grow as many bush beans, I'd have to use an entire bed. So, so there's a look at the trellis and how tall it is. And again, they often grow up into the trees. So as you see there, that's probably maybe 12 feet tall. And I have it on a terraced wall so I can stand on the terrace and I can pick without needing a ladder. So works out really well. Um, so, hey, if you like this video and you want to grow your own green beans or Egyptian walkie onions, uh, I'd highly suggest you do so. The very simple crops. Thank you.